Alrighty, so in this video, we're going to look at how we can investigate the relationship between resultant force and acceleration and mass and acceleration. So the way we're going to approach this is we're a little bit later on going to take a look at what Newton's second law says we should find with this. And then we'll essentially then be able to do an experiment to test how effectively Newton's laws are able to model the system. So that's what we're working towards. So the way we're going to do this is very simple. Uh, we're going to have two light gates set up on a desk about a meter or so apart something like that we're going to have a track along here and we're going to have a trolley that can essentially run along the track and we're going to measure its speed at different points and the reason it's going to have different speeds is because we've got a weight force from this mass down here which is going to act to accelerate it so that's the general principle and now we'll develop and look a bit more at the precise measurements we're going to take and how we're going to take them OK, so let's look in a bit more detail at the measurements we're going to take. So a light gate is capable of measuring time. And we'll ex expand on that in a second. But essentially, the measurements we're going to take in the experiment, we're going to measure something called interrupt time at gate one. We're going to measure interrupt time at gate two. And we're going to measure the time between interrupts. So how long it takes to go from one light gate to the other. And a data logger is going to do all of that for us. We're not actually going to be doing any timing. And then from that, what we're going to do is figure out how fast it's going at light gate one, how fast it's going at light gate two. And then finally, we're going to figure out what its average acceleration has been over that period of time. So that's what we're going to try and get. So is interrupt time. So essentially, um, the light gates, which you can see over here on the right hand side, they have an invisible beam going across here. And the data logger can record the time for which the beam is broken by an object passing through. And the object we're going to be passing through is this thing called an interrupt card. So that's what you can see on the side of this trolley here. So when the trolley passes through the light gate, this card is going to break through that beam. And we're going to measure how long it's breaking it for. And the way we're going to figure out the average speed of the object is using the length of the card divided by the time of interruption. And that will tell us, as the trolley is going through the light gate, it will tell us what its average speed has been. OK, so now we know what. Let's actually look, have a look at our first experiment, where we're going to investigate resultant force and acceleration. So the thing we're going to change is the resultant force. And we're going to do that by changing the mass that's on a hanger at the end of this string that's hanging over the side of the desk. So the actual force is going to be the weight force of that mass. So we're going to change the size of the mass and therefore the size of the weight force. We are going to then see its effect on the acceleration of the trolley because we're using these two light gates. We're going to be measuring the velocity at gate one, velocity at gate two. And the time between those two, that will give us the average velocity. Um, in order to do this investigation properly and ensure it's a fair test, we're going to need to make sure the total mass of the accelerating system stays the same. And I'm going to develop what that means now. What do we mean by the total mass of the accelerating system? Well, the weight force of the masses hanging over the side is going to be accelerating two things. It's going to be accelerating itself and it's going to be accelerating the trolley. So that's so the force is being used to accelerate both of those things. If we want to know the relationship between result and force and acceleration, we're going to need to keep that total mass of this the same the whole time. But we also need to be able to increase the weight force of the falling mass, which means we're going to need to be able to add masses down here. And the way we're going to get around this issue is we're going to place fixed masses on the actual trolley itself. And so when they're when they're not on the mass hanger that's falling, they're going to be on the trolley. So therefore, the total mass of the system stays the same. And therefore, that's not going to mess up our measurements. OK, so that's what we mean there. Another question you might be asking yourself is, well, what about drag and friction? We're saying the resultant force is the weight force of these falling masses, but there are going to be other forces acting on them as well. We're going to have some friction and we're going to have some drag. Well, we can't eliminate those completely. Uh, so one suggestion might be that we do this on an air track, which should minimize friction. 
Uh, but we don't have about 12 air tracks that everyone can share, so that's not going to work too well. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the track a slight slope. And we're going to get the slope just right that as the trolley rolls through the two light gates without any matters on the end, um, it's going to stay at constant speed, which means the tilt of the track is offsetting the friction and drag that are acting. So we can't get rid of it completely, but by giving it the little tilt, that should essentially counteract drag and friction, and we've minimized them as much as possible, but uh, we can't get rid of them entirely. Okay, so to the actual experiment itself, the way it's actually going to be done is we're going to set up the system as shown in the diagram with a 100 gram mass hanger on the end of the string. So that's down here. I'm going to place six 100 gram masses onto the trolley so that the total mass of the moving system is 1200 grams. So there's 700 grams from the actual masses, so the hanger plus the six masses, and then 500 grams for the actual trolley itself. We'll then take measurements to determine the acceleration, so measure the time at light gate one, time at light gate two, time between the two, and the length of the interrupt card. And then we'll repeat that process over and over and over, each time moving 100 grams from the trolley onto the hanger, and thus keeping math the same. And then finally, in terms of doing our analysis, what we're going to do is plot a resultant force versus the mass graph, because we're going to use that later on to see how well our experiment has worked. Okay. So, what do we expect that graph to look like? Well, using Newton's second law, which we'll come on to a little bit later on, it is expected that the relationship is going to be directly proportional. So we're expecting a straight line going through the origin here. So that's what make, would make it directly proportional. But in terms of how we mathematically describe a directly proportional graph, that means at any point on the line of best fit, the resultant force divided by the acceleration will be the same value. So what do I actually mean by that? Okay, so if I pick a point on here, that is going to have a value of acceleration. I'm going to call it A1. And it's also going to have a value for resultant force. And if we pick another point, that's going to have a different acceleration, but it's also going to have a different resultant force. So what we should find is that resultant force 1 divided by A1 should be equal to resultant force 2 divided by A2. And I could pick any other point and do resultant force 3 divided by A3. We essentially should get the same value. And in terms of what that value will be, we're going to come back to that later in. So uh, we're going to leave a space here. So there's a question asking you what value you're expecting. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Uh, but that's essentially what we're expecting to see for this experiment. So let's have a look at the second experiment we're going to do as well, investigating mass and acceleration. So the thing we're going to change is the total mass of the accelerating system. The thing that we are going to see its effect on is the acceleration of the trolley again. And the thing we need to keep the same this time is the resultant force. So we're going to keep the mass on this hanger down here exactly the same the whole time. I know, well, something like 100 grams, something like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. In terms of, so we're going to set it up with 100 grams on the mass hanger, and that's going to stay the same. We're going to measure the acceleration of that. Then we're going to repeat that, but add 100 grams of mass onto the trolley. So that's going to increase the mass of the system, but we haven't changed the resultant force. So that's great. And then we're going to plot a graph of mass versus acceleration. And again, we can do some analysis from that, which we'll do later on. OK. Prediction. What are we expecting to see? So Newton's second law says that we're supposed to get a result, a inversely proportional relationship between mass and acceleration. So what does that actually mean? Well, in terms of what it will look like, it's a graph that looks like this one. So um, the gradient is always negative, but the gradient is decreasing. Uh, so let's, let's actually uh, annotate that. So negative gradient. And then we've got a decreasing gradient. So those two things mean it could be an inverse proportional graph, but it doesn't mean it actually is one. To find out if it actually is an inverse proportional, what we need to do is multiply the mass and acceleration values 
of any point on the line and we should get the same value. So we're going to do the same kind of way we did last time. So if we pick a random point, that's M1, that's A1, we'll do the same thing, pick another random one, go la 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 la, M2, A2. So what that means is if we do M1, A1, that should be equal to or approximately equal to M2, A2. That's what it's trying to describe here. So this is how we will tell if it's actually inversely proportional that by doing this test. The negative gradient and decreasing gradient just says it might be one. Um, yeah. OK, so that's what we're expecting from that experiment. So let's see why we're expecting those two things. And to do that, we need to know what Newton's second law is. So Newton's second law fundamentally states that resultant force is mass times acceleration, or essentially expressing it in, equ expressing it in equation form, resultant force here, so sum of all of the forces due to mass times acceleration. So if we look at this equation, if we keep mass the same, if we double the resultant force, we will also double the acceleration because mass hasn't changed. So doubling the left-hand side, we have to double the right-hand side. Mass hasn't changed, so we have to double the acceleration. That's the classic criteria for a directly proportional relationship. If we look on the right-hand side, if with constant resultant force, if mass is doubled, acceleration must halve so that when we multiply them, it reaches the same value overall. So it is a classic condition of an inversely proportional type relationship. So that's why. That's why we're expecting those two results. It comes directly from this equation of thinking about what it shows you. I said earlier we're going to come back to predicting what the value of resultant force over acceleration will be on our graph. So using Newton's second law, if we divide both sides by acceleration to get resultant force divided by acceleration, we can see it should be equal to the mass of the system that's accelerating. So for our experiment, the mass of the system that was accelerating is 1.2 kilograms, because we need if it's in an equation, it would come out in kilograms. So we'd expect that resultant force divided by acceleration should be 1.2 for any value that we pick from our graph. That's what we're expecting in this experiment. If we do the same thing for the graph, so we've already got the equation in the right form because we've got mass times acceleration over here. So if we do mass times acceleration, it should be one Newton for all points on the line of S fit. And the reason why is because the resultant force is the weight we've hung on the end of the string. The mass was 100 grams or 0.1 kilograms. We're on Earth, so G is 10. So we're expecting it to be about one Newton for any point that we pick on our line of best fit if we multiply mass and acceleration.